Welcome back, fuckers. Alrighty, in today's video, we're going to be running through DCS Simple Radio. So if you've uh, watched the YouTube videos of other people online or you've been watching streams and you've heard them talking on radio communications, it sounds like they're talking on a radio, this is what they're using. So it's a standalone um, program that runs in the background while you're playing DCS and it lets you talk on the radio. And it's called DCS Simple Radio standalone okay or srs okay it's called srs if you just type in into google srs dcs you'll get this uh website so dcs impeller dcs simpler radio.com is the or simple radio.com is the uh, the website and got a little quick little blurb here what we want to do is just click on download latest release and it's going to take you over to the GitHub page. So the once you've clicked on there, it will have the latest release of SRS. And uh, this is to run with the open beta. So when they bring out stuff um, like new aircraft and stuff like that, there will be SRS updates that you'll have to download. Um, and update was super easy. Okay, so don't stress. So this is the latest release, 2.0.4.0. As of the, what day is it today? It is the 18th of July, uh, June, 18th of June, 2022. So this is what release date we're at. And it came out 29 days ago. There you go. It's got a quick brief uh, history of what they've changed and things that they've done. Um, the biggest thing, if you run into drama, is go to the Discord channel. Okay, so there's links all over the place. On here, scroll down. Please ask on Discord for troubleshooting. So if you have any dramas after trying to get this working for yourself and it's still not playing the game, jump in the Discord and ask the question or even search for the question that you've got. Uh, they've got a frequently asked questions area that a lot of people ask the same question and answers are in there. So Discord, very helpful. Okay, so make sure you check that out. Um, so you're going to come down here and you're just going to click on that one right there. So DCS-Simple Radio Standalone. I'm going to click on that. All right, it's going to do its download, downloading its thing. All right, so it's downloaded. Now, how do you install it and all the rest of it? Okay, so you come up to the top, and on the top bar here, you've got Wiki. So you're going to click on the Wiki, and this is going to give you all the information that you can find and need to install and any kind of uh, stuff that you may find useful. So Got little hyper hyperlinks here that you can go down. So it's got features and goals on what he's trying to uh, to work on. We're going to come down to installation and setup. We're just going to copy this. So download the extract. Okay, zip file. Run the installer. Note: if Windows prevents the exe from running, click Show More followed by Run Anyway. This applies to the client and server exec executables as well. So we're going to do that right now. So I'm just going to quickly extract it. Uh, Alrighty, so we've got our file here. Ooh. Got our file, and we're just going to copy this as it is written. So let's move this up a touch so we can read it. Okay, step two, run the installer.exe. Let's do that. So installer, we're going to click on this. All right, so here we go. Step one, pick install location. So make sure, I've already got this installed, but we're just going to install over the top of it and do it fresh. So uh, pick your install location. It'll be default to program files, DCS simple radio standalone. Just leave it where it is. Next one you want is to locate the folder for your save games files. Okay, so we're going to go locate. D drive, come on, there we go. Users, Tawny, Save Games, and then DCS, Open Feeder. Oh, we don't need DCS Open Feeder. Scratch that. Cancel. So just the Save Games folder. My bad. Okay. You don't need to go to the Save Games DCS. Just put it in the Save Games folder. All right. Is where you want it. So it's found it. And then you can select Create Start Menu Shortcut or Install Slash Update DCS. So if you've already got an older version of DCS uh, SRS installed on your computer and you want to up, 
update it to the latest. All you do is the exact same installation process you're doing now and just click the same button and it'll either install it fresh if you don't have it or it will update it to the latest. So we're just gonna click on update DCS-SRS. Okay, so just confirming you've got your uh, take note of where it's installing it to, the drive program files, and then make sure you've got your save game folder, not the DCS one, just the save games. And you're gonna hit install slash update DCS. Boom. All right, done, all done. The folder you selected for step one, pick install location should now open. That which uh, hasn't for me, but that's all good. We'll just go there real quick. There it is. Uh, should open if you would like create a shortcut for the SRS client radio or SRS.exe depending on which one you like to use So that one there Okay, that's the the one that you're going to use to open up SRS Client radio, so we're gonna do that right now. I'm gonna click on it double click And it's gonna load itself up All right so this is your, can I make this bigger? I cannot. This is your SRS client. Okay, so you want client, not server. All right, because you just want to connect to stuff. So you're going to go through here, client setup. You must first run the SRS client exe in order to configure and connect to servers of Simple Radio. Okay, in the general tab, you can select your input, so your microphone and then your speakers, output devices, and modify the boost for both, preview your input audio, connect to a server, and toggle the radio overlay. So with the, when you've uh, on the general page, okay, you won't be connected to any, any servers at all. All right, um, I've got some saved ones already. All right, you can save custom ones or save uh, servers for yourself that you like and you can connect to. We'll get into that in a second. So your first one, your microphone, you want to choose the microphone you use. Okay, and there's lots of different options. Make sure you choose the one that uh, is your actual microphone that you talk on. And then your speakers, this is going to be, um, it'll be default um, speaker. Okay, so I've got it so that when I record on uh, my videos, it's going to make the microphone sound effect over the top of my voice for the video. So. Um, that's why I've got the optional mic output selected, but yours will just be on default by uh, by default things. So probably default microphone, default uh, speakers, and then this will be set to no mic output. Okay, that's pretty much fine. You can confirm if it's working or not. So if you click on this audio preview right, preview now, right now, you can hear, you can me, hear talking. me talking. If you don't get that radio effect preview going over the top, so if you hit audio preview and it doesn't do doesn't this, do this. Radio, sound, radio effect. sound effect, you have a issue with either your speaker or your microphone. So just makes you scroll through and try and find the combo of speaker and microphone that gives you Choose this audio, this audio preview. preview. If you don't, if you hear, don't this, hear this, it won't work in SRS in the game. Okay, so just make sure of that. Um, on this page, you've got radio overlays. Okay, so this will, this will pop up and it kind of stays on the screen so you can drag it onto your monitor in game okay and it will stay there so you'll be able to see it and you can adjust the opacity this is what i do when i apply i've got the opacity down low so that will stay there so i can see this when i'm flying okay this is visible while you are flying in the game it stays on your screen you just drag it drag it to where you want it to be and it will stay exactly there and you can adjust the uh the opacity of it and this is your channel. So you'll have, you know, COM1, COM2, COM3, or intercom. It'll change as you uh, connect to different aircraft. And it'll tell you what radio frequency it is. And you can also set it up, and, and I'll show you in a second. When someone talks, you'll see the name of uh, the person talking as well. All right, which just makes it a little bit easier. You can kind of just glance at the radio and see who's talking on what channel. Less confusing for you. So I have my opacity set down pretty low. And I just have it in the bottom right corner. For me, when I fly, that's where I kind of put it. So it stays there. You can toggle that on or off. You've also got AWACS, which is uh, if you want to do GCI on lot ATC, um, you can use this and you'll have eight channels you can tune in instead of the three. 
Okay, so you've got more channels, you can run more stuff, talk to more people. Um, and then you've also got the client list. So when you join the server, you can see who's actually connected to SRS in the server when you join. So if you jump onto um, a multiplayer server and SRS connects and you're talking and no one's talking back, you can double check. You can click on the toggle client list. And if there's heaps of other people in the server connected and you're talking and asking questions and no one's replying to you, then you can kind of figure out that maybe it's your SRS that's the problem, right? But on the flip side, if you're talking to people and no one's replying and then you go to the toggle clients list and no one else is connected to SRS except for yourself, that's why, because no one else is on comms. So you can check that as well. Um, your EAM coalition password or EAM name, don't worry about that stuff. It'll populate itself when you join um, a server. Okay, so the last multiplayer server you go into or the last server that's got SRS running, I should say, it will just copy your uh, in-game name that you've set for yourself and it'll just leave it there. Okay, so don't stress on that. And then down the bottom, you've got your status. So when you connect to a server, um, it will go green. VoIP will go green. Game will go green. If you're using LOD ATC, it'll go green as well. So if these little power plug things aren't connected, you know you've got issues as well. Okay, and I'll show you that in a second. Next one is setting up your... Uh, your controls. So we'll come over here. So you've got radio one, radio two, radio three, push to talk, intercom, special intercom, overlay toggle, radio four, radio five, radio six, radio seven, eight, nine, ten. There's lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of settings that you can toggle. The main ones you're going to be using are going to be the first kind of ones I've got bound. So I've got four controls bound for SRS. And on the uh, Thrustmaster Warthog throttle, that's what I use. So the, the radio, the mic switch on the right-hand throttle that your thumb sits on, the up, down, left, right, and uh, the press, I've got those bound. So for me, radio one is on that, that, uh, that switch. I pull back um, or press left on it for radio one. Radio two is to the right or forward. And then radio three is... Uh, down, okay, and my intercom select is also down, okay, on that switch. You can bind them to whatever you want, okay, but the main ones, most aircraft are fitted with two radios, so you're going to need at least radio one, radio two. Some aircraft have three radios, and some aircraft have three radios and an intercom, so that is pretty much the uh, main ones you're going to be looking at, all right, and to bind it, all you do is just press set, We'll clear it out first. Clear. So you're going to press set and then hit your bind. And then there you go. It will do it. If it doesn't come up as a bind, if it doesn't recognize it, you can, uh, in the settings, you can change uh, to recognize more uh, devices. But as it stands, if you're trying to use your Xbox controller, if you do have an Xbox controller for when you're flying in the Apache, I don't think the Xbox controller is recognized at this stage. So you can't use that for a push to talk or something like that. Anyways, that's your uh, your controls. So you set them up in there. So main ones you'd be looking for is Radio 1, Radio 2, Radio 3, and Intercom. Those four buttons is what you're after. All right, okay. Favorites. So this is where you can add in your, uh, you can save a, a server. So if you joined a server, uh, you just come into here, go to Save tab. It will already, already have the address in. All right, and I'll show you this when we get into a game in a second. I'm just going to quickly... Close my. Where are you? Close that for now. So I'll show you this in a second how to connect to a server. Now we're going to come to the settings tab. Okay, so settings. This is where most of your stuff you're going to be running through. So in your settings tab, you've got global settings. So auto connect, um, I would leave this set to on and auto connect mismatch prompt set to on. All right, and what that means is if you have SRS closed, so it's not even open, okay, the program isn't running at all. When you join a server that has SRS enabled on it, it's going to automatically open up SRS and connect to it for you straight away. Right, so that is very handy. So if you forget to connect to SRS before you join the server, you're not going to know the SRS uh, address. 
it's a pain in the ass. So just leave it on auto connect. And then if you don't want to use SRS, you can just close SRS down and turn it off if you don't want to use it, but have it on auto connect. So then it does connect to you without you having to think about it. Uh, auto connect mismatch prompt is if you were in a server and you left that server, it keeps you connected to it, even though you're not in the game anymore. And then when you join another server, if you like switch from say blue flag uh, to uh, another one like Growling, uh, Growling Sidewinder or Grey Flag or something, the SRS will pick up that you've joined another server with a different SRS server itself and it will pop up a little thing saying there is a mismatch, do you want to connect to the new server? So you press leave that on so that if you do change servers, it will update your server connection to the latest server you're playing on, if that makes sense. Okay, so just leave those both on, it makes it easier for you. Uh, interface, you can set that up. So here's where you can have the uh, the show transmitter name requires server on to. All right. So that means that the server, the actual SRS server, which the person who is running the multiplayer server will have their SRS server um, program running that we connect to. The clients connect to the DCS SRS server side of it um, they need to enable this as well but show transmitter name you turn that on when someone talks on srs if you've got your uh your little radio toggle here toggle radio overlay come on all right when someone talks it'll say their actual call sign in-game name there and it'll light up these lights will actually uh go green when someone talks and they'll be yellow when no one's talking on them but at the moment they're all red because they're not connected to anything Again, I'll show you that stuff in a second. So that's that. So show transmitter name. I have that on just so I can see who's talking because um, sometimes it's hard to understand um, people with the microphone effect. It's hard to understand there. Next one, microphone, microphone, automatic gain control. I've left them both to on. Okay, I just left them on default. Um, voice detection on intercom hot mic. This is mainly for the Apache. Okay, so if you don't fly the Apache, don't stress on it. But if you do fly the Apache, it has got a function in there so that it is like a, uh, a hot mic for the intercom only. So when you talk into your microphone, you can set up a threshold so it will, um, you don't have to press the key bind to talk on the intercom, which is uh, a setting that the Apache has. So that's what this is for, intercom hot mic voice detection. So if you do use that, okay, you can copy those settings there. That works pretty decent for me, but um, just tweak the settings as required. Next one, recording. So if you want to record the voice transmissions, so the SRS while you're on there, if you want to record all the, the sounds of people talking and stuff and then, I don't know, play it in the background of another video or something, you can do that if you'd like to. Uh, miscellaneous settings, auto select profile for aircraft. Okay, that'll be by default off. All right, so you can set up um, profiles for each aircraft type that you fly. So you can have different key binds for different things. Um, we're not going to get into that too much, so that'll be default off. Just leave it off. It's fine. Uh, check for beta updates off. Require admin on allow Viacom transmit inhibit. So if you use Viacom uh, Voice Pro, okay, you can do that. Uh, play connection sounds on or off. So when it connects, you'll hear it beep, which we'll go through in a second. And then there you go. There's allow more control input devices. So in the key binds, if uh, your controller wasn't recognize the button you're pressing hit rescan controller first try it again if it's still not come into the uh, miscellaneous and then click on allow more controller input devices and it may pick it up then all right uh, you can save your profile so by default you'll have a default profile um, and then you can make different profiles so i've got uh, one for the hornet that i use so as soon as i jump in the f18 hornet it will automatically update to the f18 profile that I use, which is pretty much the exact same as what I've got now. Anyways, profile settings, here we go. So controls slash cockpit integration. So radio switch works as push to talk. Turn that on, otherwise you'll hot mic and you'll be talking constantly. They'll hear you mouth breathing and all the rest of the stuff and people will get the shit at you. So turn that on. So this, a thing to remember here. So your SRS radio all right, so we'll use the uh, the Hornet as an example. So SRS radio comms and DCS radio comms, as in COM1 and COM2 in the actual Hornet, where you use the, you know, the, uh, the F, F uh, 
F1, F2, F3 to like call the tower or contact the refueler or anything like that. They're different things. Okay, so you don't have to, your SRS keybind doesn't have to be the exact same button you would use for the radio in the Hornet. And for example, in the Hornet, for me to bring up COM1, I use the keyboard. I press left control and number one brings up COM1 radio, which will bring up the, you know, uh, ATC, refueler, um, AWACS, the options that you can select F1, F2, F3. Okay, COM1 and COM2 is left control one, left control two for me. Whereas COM1 talking on SRS is the switches that I talked to about before. So they're different things. They don't have to be the same. Keep that in mind. Okay. <clears throat> but make sure it's on push to talk. Otherwise, you'll press the button and it'll stay on hot mic until you press it to turn it off. Um, auto select first channel preset on. So whatever your radio is tuned to, it will just tune to in the game. So if your Hornet radio again, was tuned to 250 when you first turn SRS on, it's going to be tuned to 250. And it'll say the radio frequency in here, and I'll show you all that stuff in a second. Um, always allow SRS hotkeys. I've got that turned on. Allow in-cockpit DCS control push to talk. I've got that turned on. And then you can change your uh, push to talk release delay in milliseconds there, whatever you want to do. Next one, radio effect settings. So this is if you want the, the little... Um, little clicks before and after you press and hold, it just makes it sound more realistic. Okay, so it sounds like, can we get a copy of that? No, I'll show you in a second when we join a uh, server. Radio receive effects and radio transmit effects. I've got both those turned on. You can change the sound of them. Okay, they've got a couple of different things. Uh, radio encryption effects. So if you're going to use mids um, or an encrypted radio, you can make it sound like a different button. Enable radio voice effect. So this is the, the option that makes people sound like they're talking on a radio. So if you can't understand someone or you don't like the radio sound effect and you just want to have it like you're just talking on Discord or um, uh, TeamSpeak or something, turn that off and they will sound normal. They won't sound like they're on a radio, but... I think the whole point of SRS is because it's, you sound like you're talking on a radio. Make sure you just leave that on. And then enable clipping effect requires radio effects on. Um, that's just if they're super loud. I think it will reduce the ear bashing on you. All right. Now you've got uh, FM radio tone. So I've got these turned off for me. So this is just like the static. Yeah, the static in the background. You'll hear like the a little staticky sound you can adjust the sound of that i've just got it turned off because i don't want to hear static in the back of my ears all right i just want to hear people talk but you can turn that on or off and adjust how loud the static is for your own sake and then almost at the bottom of the list here we've got our audio tab so this is where um, srs can become a little less overwhelming for you by adjusting these so this is which ear you will hear the audio come out of And if you've watched uh, any of my videos where I'm talking on SRS, you'll, and you're listening to, or you're watching the video with headphones on, you'll hear sometimes the, the voice will be out of my left ear or my right ear or both my ears. And this is where you can set it. So for me, COM1 is coming out of my left ear. So I know in my head when I'm flying around doing stuff, if I hear someone talk in my left ear, I know that I have to use COM1 to talk back to them. If I hear someone talk out of my right ear, I know I've got to use COM2 to talk back to them. And the reason why I went left and right is because COM1 in the Hornet's on the left and COM2 in the Hornet is on the right. You know, I'm a simple man. And then Radio 3, if you've got it, um, I've left it as equal and intercom is on equal as well. So if I hear it in both of my ears, I know that it's intercom. And then if I hear it in left or right, um, I know that it is from COM1 or COM2, all right? And that's just how I uh, make it so that my brain doesn't explode and trying to figure it. Because if you had all these on equal, you wouldn't be able to tell who was talking on COM1, COM2, or COM3, or intercom, because it all sound the same. So you can break the radio channels up, and I would suggest doing that. Okay, put them in different ears so that, you know, if you hear it out of one ear, it's one radio. If you hear it out of the other ear, it's another radio, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, that's pretty much setting it up. So let's jump in. So I'm just going to close this and I'm going to load up DCS and we'll jump in a server and we'll have a, uh, we'll connect to it and we'll do a mic check. 
And uh, yeah, we'll, see, we'll go from there. All right, guys, so here we go. We're in the game now. We're going to go to the multiplayer server list. And we're just going to pick a server that I know that has got SRS on it. And it has got players in, so we can talk on the radio as well. When it populates. Come on now, there we go. All righty. So if you're watching right now and you don't play multiplayer, all right, you, 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 don't, you, you don't go in multiplayer servers, you just do single player solely and exclusively, why? Why do you guys not want to play multiplayer? I'm like curious to know because I just find it so much more fun to play with other people or against other people. But I know a lot of people don't like multiplayer. So if you don't like multiplayer or you've never tried it, Throw in the comments down below why why that is like what is what's the reason for you not to you to try multiplayer or you know you're scared are you um you don't want to get killed like is it intimidating like what is it what's the reason for you for not doing it throw in the comments I, I'm just very very curious why more people don't play multiplayer okay anyway so here we go so we've got this is uh, my favorites so the main one I've been flying at the moment is the gray flag server I'm really enjoying it. And you can click on there. Does it say it has SRS? Don't know if it says SRS is enabled. They definitely do have SRS, but I don't think there's a way to tell if they've got SRS or not. Anyways, we're going to join them. So again, the password, if you want to get the password for Gray Flag server, you need to go to their Discord, and their Discord is right there. You can copy that. And then throw that into your Discord, join the server, and then you'll get the password off of their server. Um, once you've got the password, it automatically saves it for you, and you can just join. So we're going to join in now, and you're going to hear a couple of things. You're going to hear a beep and a click as SRS loads up. There we go. If I just go to... Uh, so you can see it's loaded up, and... It, it is connected to gray flag. Okay. Uh, we can go toggle client list. And there is the client. So when it's blue, it means the client is fully connected. So you can see here we've got server, VoIP is green, game is, sorry, server is green, VoIP is green, but game is not because we're not loaded into the game just yet. So that'll change in a second. And then our little, uh, little guy here will go blue as well as soon as the game loads up. You can also see the uh, the server settings um, that they've got enabled. So coalition security off. Um, so this is like secure comms. So if you knew the the comms for the enemy team, you could tune into the comms, which is what they do. They can tune into your your radio communications and they can listen in to your you guys talking on the radio. So if that's turned off, you can tune into the enemy team. And listen to them so they have to use like encrypted comms if they want to or go to another channel that you don't know um, to hide it uh, line of sight so this is what the server's got enabled at the moment line of sight is on distance limitations it's off in real life radio transmit behavior off off uh, external AWACS on so you can see what the server is running okay um, now you can see that game is green and when we jump into a slot we at the moment we we are blue at the moment uh, sorry white because we're not in an actual aircraft um, let's just get that up as well. Put that down there for now. All right, so I'm going to quickly jump in a Hornet. Just because, you know, jump in on the, uh, the aircraft carrier. And let's do it. Alright, so if I bring up my SRS again, you see now it's blue, because I'm in an aircraft, and I've got three green, you can see it's for picking up my voice, so I can now do a uh, comms check in a second, once I actually 
start my aircraft up. So you can see at the moment on the uh, the HOTAS controls the little overlay, you can see the radio frequency. Okay, you got mids, intercom, and then our COM1, COM2. Okay, so it defaults to whatever the aircraft is. Just put that there for now. So I'm going to turn my battery on, and you can see now we've got our radio channel 267.75 has come up. I'm just going to start the aircraft up. Start up the aircraft so we get our, our radios working. Get some power on the jet and then we can do a comms check. So we can do a comm check right now, but um, that's just because it defaults to in that setting that we had before. Settings. Where are you? Uh, auto select first channel preset. If that was turned off, this wouldn't come on until we actually put power on the jet. All right, so there you go. Now we've got both our radios are turned on. We've got power on the jet. So you can right see left, right I'm uh, 267.75. I was to go Light to controls. manual and I would put in 369 giggity. All right, you can see now it says 369 AM. And then we've got COM2, mids, mids A, mids B. Okay, and then we've got no intercom, and then I can adjust the brightness of that as I see fit. All right, so we're going to go back to COM Zero stud seven. one. At 8, All right, so that's tuned into AWACS. All right, so you can see AWACS is actually talking there Uzi, one, one. Magic, one, one. in COM1, on but you can't actually Zero hear them three, on there because it's in-game. So there's... I'm just going to turn that down. So as you adjust the volume of the actual aircraft, it actually adjusts the volume of your SRS at the same time. So if you don't want to hear that channel, you can turn it off. You can see I've turned off COM2. Now COM2 is actually off. Turn the volume all the way up loud. So you can adjust the volume of people's voices off the radio volume dial, which is pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> all right, so we're going to do a comms check on 267.75, and you're going to hear the... Uh, the the click buttons. All right, should be able to hear that in my right ear. And I'm going to do a comms check on COM1 for 267. Venom for one comms check, 267.75. Five by five. Thank you, good sir. So there you go. So we got five clients, five people are on 267.75 and two people are tuned into the AWACS. All right, and I did a uh, comms check, which you always should do when you jump into SRS. Do a comms check, make sure that people can hear you and then you can hear them. And what he said was uh, five by five, I believe. So your replies back that you're normally gonna get, uh, five by five, which means loud and clear. All right, or you might hear Lima Charlie stands for loud and clear all right phonetic alphabet have you lima charlie um or they'll just say yep we can hear you no dramas at all and that is pretty much it so you do a comms check and then as you change your radio frequencies all right this will change and update to reflect the appropriate one And then we'll just talk one more time. We'll just see if I can get someone to actually speak back to me. Uh, we'll just ask him. Where are we? Please be on SRS. It is required. Um, we'll ask him where they're going. Uh, any call signs, this is Venom41, just requesting information on latest lattice, where's, the, uh, where's everyone working? We should see now, people talk, we should see their name. Southern Syria seems to be the most populated area right now. Copy that, thank you. So it brings up their name, 
on who's talking to you and then it was in my left ear because it was on I'm talking on com one all right and that is pretty much SRS all done so like I said before if you have any dramas with SRS the biggest one is let me bring this back up before you connect to a uh, server make sure you check the audio preview and you hear yourself talking all right i don't have to press any it's, this is hot mic okay the audio preview is hot mic you don't have to press any of your, uh, your push to talk buttons you should hear yourself sound like you're talking on the radio in your ears okay you should hear that if you don't hear your audio preview when you join in into your server other people won't be able to hear you all right so if that's the case muck around with your microphone and your speakers okay until you get that audio preview giving you the radio sound effect over your own voice and then you should have no dramas at all connecting to SRS um, but yeah join their discord if you haven't already uh, the SRS discord and then if you have any more dramas with stuff that's not working throw your questions in there and um, that will definitely help you get yourself sorted out but it's very easy to set up and then once you've got it set up you know you just I can close this server down and so I'm just going to fully close it. And then if I join another server, so let's just go, we'll join this one. Oh, this has got SRS as well. It's going to load back up because I fully closed it down. So it will it'll pop back up. There we go. It's connected to the new server. And now I'm just going to, as soon as this loads, I'm going to bang out. I'm going to join back into gray flag. And then it'll, it'll show you the, uh, the pass or the server mismatch thing that comes up. And remember, this is in your auto connect prompt. Having that auto connect prompt makes you load SRS as soon as you join the server. It will load the uh, the program up, and then the auto connect mismatch, which I'll show you in a second, is going to be um, handy when you swap servers and you forget to disconnect and reconnect. Come on, there we go. There it is. SRS advertised does not match the SRS server. You are currently connected to would you like to connect to the advertised server so when you swap servers this will pop up this auto connect mismatch and you press yes and it will disconnect you and then reconnect you to the new server okay so there you go that's what those two settings right there are very handy so it will reconnect you disconnect um last thing we'll chain or we'll cover and then we'll wrap this one up so just say, so this is, uh, I can't even remember what I just clicked. I think it was Growling Sidewinder. So if I wanted to save this as a preset, okay, because uh, sometimes if you disconnect from the server or you close SRS by accident, you need to get the uh, server address again, which is a pain in the ass. So if it's the server you always go to, all you do, that's the current server. You're going to go to name. Actually go back and copy that. Copy it. Go to this and we're going to call it growling. Don't paste it twice, you idiot. Paste it and then you just hit that. Add. Yep, and there you go, you got growling. There, you can call it whatever you want. Okay, so that is it. And then if you, for whatever reason, you disconnected and you lost that, you're like, oh man. I lost the password or the server address. You can just click on there, hit connect, and then there you go. In you go. All right, you can see everyone that's connected. So the red is obviously the red team. Blue is blue team, blue four and red four. And then the white, is they're connected to the game, but they're not actually in an aircraft slot just yet. All right, cool. That'll do us there, guys. So if uh, you enjoyed the video, make sure you go ahead and hit the like button for me. If um, you've got anyone that would find this useful, like always, share it. Tell, tell your friends. Share the video around. Um, spread the love of SRS. It's very easy to get set up or use once you get it set up. Um, setting up is a little bit intimidating, but it's not too bad. And lastly, but not least, if you haven't already, super appreciate if you hit the big old red subscribe button and support the channel that way. Um, yeah, we're cruising along in the, in the subscriber stats. We're getting up towards the 4,000 as of recording this video. And uh, we should hit it pretty soon by the way we're tracking, which is amazing. So thank you to everyone that has uh, been a subscriber for a while or you just subscribed. Thank you very much for hitting the red button. And yeah, appreciate all of you. Anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed it. Hope this helped. And like I said, if you've got any dramas with um, 
SRS in general, jump on their Discord and um, people will be in there to help you out. No dramas at all. They'll give you some advice, point you in the right direction and hopefully get you in and talking on comms. And remember, guys, in the comments, if you don't play multiplayer, why don't you? I'm, I'm genuinely curious to know why people are so uh, apprehensive about coming into a multiplayer server and flying around with other people. Throw them in the comments. Let me know, guys. All right. That's enough for everyone. Catch us later.